Hello, devotees. So when I live stream on Twitch, a lot of people will come in and ask me, Hey, Voti, who do you main in Genshin? Well, today, you will finally get an answer to your question. My main is Thingsleth. Well, just kidding. The true answer is, I don't really have a main yet. Which is why I started this new Zero to Hero series, where I'll be spending 30 days to main a character. And hopefully by the end of this series, I'll be able to decide who I want to main in Genshin Impact. For this series, I'll be leveling up a character if they are still level 1, and trying out different team comps in the overworld, fighting bosses, and complete a spiral abyss. After last month's video with Yao Yao, I created a poll asking who I should main next, and Layla won overwhelmingly with the most votes. So for the past 30 days, I've been using her, and learned a lot. So here's how I transformed Layla from 0 to hero in 30 days. On the first day, I focused on leveling up my Layla since she was only level 1. I also invited a few people off my Twitch stream to help me farm, so I can just sit back and pretend I'm doing something. We also went to farm the Eon Blight Drake for Layla's essential materials. And with co-op, we could easily deal with the boss. I tried out Layla's show strength for my co-op teammates, but the shields break easily considering the fact we're only at level 50. But I've been told that her shield is really good, so once I level her up, hopefully we will be able to see her true strength. Next, we went around Inazuma just to defeat some enemies in order to get some materials. Since I ran out of resins after farming enough materials to level 50, I ended my day 1 here. On the second day, I went to collect some lotus flowers for my Layla. I also leveled up some of her talents to strengthen her shield and went to test it out by fighting some more Aeon Blight Drakes in order to ascend her. I'm currently using her as a shield character since I'm still in the process of leveling her up, but my RNG is kinda bad since I kept on getting 2 of the boss drops instead of 3. Because of this, I went to take out my anger on some fungi and decided to call it a day. I started my day 3 depleting my resins by fighting the Eon Blight Drake once again. And like usual, I only got 2 drops on the boss. I also leveled up her talent levels again, and leveled up a few HP artifacts. Because her shield scales by how much HP she has, I basically threw all my resins on this boss so I can level her up. And again, I got 2 of the materials. I may be uttering some choice words right now, but luckily you guys can't hear it, but I rage quitted the game after this. On day 4, I started using Layla as a DPS character. I tried a freeze comp recommended by Clix, which is basically using Tong Yun's elemental scale as cryo infusion and Xinxiao to apply hydro for freeze. My Diana is there for the heals and cryo particles for maximum burst uptime, but as someone still learning Layla, this team felt okay and probably could be better. I went around Mondstadt farming for materials, and Layla's skill helped out with freezing, so we basically just defeated the frozen enemies effortlessly. I paused to read her skill description and realized that I had to utilize my other characters' skills more in order to generate the night stars quickly from her shield. As I got used to Layla's playstyle, together with Diona, I basically created a pretty, tanky, unhittable team. So I started day 5 with my boss rushes again, and I even used a different team comp as well, hoping that my luck will finally change. Okay, if I don't get 3 boss drops, you guys will have to subscribe. Alright, cool. Even though we only got 2 boss drops for the majority of our fights, we were able to finally ascend Layla to level 80, and even got to level up her talents to level 6. On day 6, I returned back to Inazuma to farm for some spectre drops. This time I built my Layla with physical artifacts, and used a team suggested by Clix again. With electro characters, I could decrease the enemies' physical resistance with superconduct. So it works pretty good for a physical Layla. I got a decent amount of spectre drops for something I'll have to upgrade later in the video. But thanks again to Clix for suggesting these teams for me to test out. I began day 7 farming for some Nobushi enemies for some handguards. The team I'm using is a reverse melt team suggested by Inakatu, notably with my C6 Bennett. This allows me to infuse my Layla's normal attack with Pyro, while my Layla and Rosaria's skill and burst apply cryo to the enemies. My Xiangling is also there to do more melt damage in case my Bennett's burst is still on cooldown. But this team is pretty fun to mess around with overall. Since we're only on week 1, I was also getting used to Layla's ideal rotations. I basically burst first with Bennett, use a skill, swap to Rosaria, and unleash her burst and skills. Use Layla's skill to put up a shield and started to swing my sword around. There's probably a better rotation that I could do, but for now, the Nobushi enemies all died after one rotation. I also went to fight the Spectres with the same lineup, and at first, everything was going by pretty smoothly, until we got to the floating Spectres. And this happened. The Spectre fell down the waterfall, and is in an awkward position, where none of our attacks could reach it, besides my Layla's. So I just used my shield and switched to another character to use their skills, and immediately get our stars to slowly defeat the Spectres. With our first week under our belt, we got our Layla to level 80, and we also tried a variety of team comps already, but there are more builds that we'll be trying out as well. 
On day 8, I continued with my DPS later, but this time I tried a more supportive role for her, being primarily infusing cryo for Xiangling. This team comp is pretty interesting, because all my characters are quick switchers, which works well with Layla, because we can generate Layla's night stars every time we use an elemental skill. This is the first team that is honestly pretty good, with Sucrose for crowd control, Xiangli and Tongyun for damage, and Layla supporting with cryo applications and shields. I was able to farm a lot of different materials in Sumin. So on day 9, I went to farm some artifacts using an Ayato Freeze team, as suggested by Kalahari. It was pretty similar to the Melt team that I did, but instead of Xiangling, I used Ayato. In our first run, we managed to finish the domain in a little bit under 90 seconds, but we could probably do better. The second run, I did my usual rotations, and froze all the enemies. Lin did a big nuke attack on my Tongyun Spurs, while my Ayato finished off the enemies while they were frozen. I managed to shave off a few seconds, but we still need that sub 1 minute run. I did another run, but started out with Ayato Spurs this time, and then proceeded to freeze the enemies. I finished the Electro Lava Troll off with my Tongyun, but we just missed the sub 1 minute mark. On day 10, I went to farm for some more materials in Sumeru. I went back with a Melt team again, because this team comp is actually really fun. See, even this Eremite agrees with me. Uh, hopefully he's alright. Anyways, I explored a bit with this team in Sumeru, and collected a few chests as well. Even though we don't have a healer in our team, our team could withstand a few attacks from the enemies because Layla's shield is enough to repel the hits, and we were able to defeat the enemies before our shield broke. The Ruin Drake enemies were also pretty easy to deal with. We fought the enemy with our usual rotations, and bursted it down pretty quickly, even with it hovering in the air. But yeah, special shoutouts to Morte for this melt team comp. On day 11, I actually just ascended my Layla to level 90. We got some nice HP boost from doing so, which made our shield even stronger now. And with her burst scaling from HP as well, we also do more damage with her burst. I held off leveling her up to 90, since I wanted to test things out before I do. So she'll stay at level 80 for now. On day 12 and 13, I focused on farming for some Eremites in Sumeru. I also cleared out a few Helichos I came across along the way for Layla's talent materials. I opened a few chests and finished up the day with a bunch of satin drops from the Eremites that we'll need later on in the video. So throughout these two weeks of maining Layla, I got a brief look on how she'll work in a freeze, physical, and even a pyro melt DPS team. We also final ascended her, but we held off on leveling her up to 90. On day 14, I invited more people from my Twitch stream to help farm for some materials for my Layla. Since my Layla is level 80 now, her shield can actually help protect other players. I also leveled up my Layla to level 89 to get more HP from her. We headed to the desert to farm some Dorito enemies, mostly for my weapon upgrades that I will need in the future. I also took this time to explore a little bit of the desert area and solve some puzzles for a chest in the end. We also went to the forest area and farmed more Eremites, before ending a co-op and finishing our second week. On day 15, I used the materials we collected and ascended my sword and leveled it up to 70 for more HP stats. We'll be able to move on to building Layla as a shield character and test out how strong her shield is. And since we leveled up Layla to 90 already, once I get some HP artifacts, we'll go try her out in co-op as well. On the 16th day, I went to do the Inazuma weekly bounties for some more. I used my Hu Tao team with my Layla as a shield shoulder, as suggested by Argonaut Nana. And even though Layla applies Cryo, which may mess up some vaporized reactions, Hutel can still do melt damage to some enemies, so it wasn't really a big deal. I had Candice with me because she is a Hydro character, so I'm able to get more HP from a Hydro Resonance, thus making Layla's shield more thick. So I used my first bounty enemy to test out my shield. The Electro Lava Troll, aka Sparky, does a lot of damage, so hopefully our Layla can pass the first test. I got stuck in the water with me being electric but our shield was able to withstand the attack quite well. Layla also has a 100% uptime on her shield, so if her shield doesn't get destroyed, we'll be able to keep casting it. I intentionally got hit by Sparky, and so far we're still passing the test. Well, I didn't mean to freeze Sparky, but Layla's shield has a mind of its own, so we can't really do anything about it when it's standing next to the water. After that, I just defeated the enemy so we can move on to the next bounty. Next, we had to face the test of two Kairagis, and one of them was immune to pyro damage, so I had to use my Shinjo this time. I also decided to test out my shield against him, and it was also really strong. Okay, my shield tanked 2 hits only, but I tried again and the shield actually tanked all 4 hits from a Kairagi, so I'm pleasantly surprised. Keep in mind that my skill level is only 9 as well, so it has potential to get even better if I decided to level her skill up even more. But her shield honestly surprised me on how good it actually is. On days 17 to 20, I went back with my freeze comp with Tongyun being a support and burst for my team. 
since we needed some more Dorito chips to ascend our weapon. I headed off to do another farming session, starting from the specters, before my sucrose got stuck and unable to move. Well, good thing we still have later shields, so we won't take any damage, right? Never mind. Anyways, we defeated more specters just because I needed their materials the most. I'm kinda guilty of not exploring at all, even on my main account, since I still had a few chests that were unopened in Watatsumi Island. So let's create another incentive for me to actually do some exploration while maining different characters every month. After sweeping the floor and clearing Watatsumi Island out of specters, we ended our day. On day 21, I started a spiral abyss. For the abyss, I'm using a Layla Melcom, but instead of Sucrose, I'm using Kazuha this time. Floor 9's first chamber was an easy win for me. Oh, uh, where's our enemies at? Oh. <laughs> wow. Poor fungus. In the second chamber, we were also able to clear it pretty easily since the enemies were still pretty low on HP side, and our melt team did a lot of damage, combined with Layla's cryo infusions. The third chamber was a cruise as well, and we easily got through the ninth floor. On floor 10, I tried the reverse melt team with C6 Bennett. In the second chamber, we had to deal with the like two Kairagi enemies. It would be ideal if we could defeat both of them together, so they won't heal up, so we had to fight this carefully. Once both Kairagis were close together, I unleashed all my bursts and did a pretty good amount of damage to both of them. Luckily for us, they were both defeated around the same time, and we were able to easily clear this chamber afterwards. In the final chamber, there were only 5 enemies, and they were all pretty close together. I targeted a Pyro for 3 Gunner first, because I didn't have any Hydro character with me to destroy the shield. And after that, we quickly got rid of the other enemies effortlessly. On floor 11, I brought the same Layla reverse melt comp, and it actually worked out pretty well, because all the meter trolls were grouped together very closely. The last enemy was Sparky, the Electro Lawa Troll, and even he wasn't much of a threat. The second chamber was a bit tricky with the Abyss Herald. We were able to chip away his HP and got to his shield phase. Luckily, we had both Layla and Rosaria, who are both cryo characters, so we could start working on breaking the shield to defeat the Abyss Herald. Everything was going great until this actually happened. What? Did my Rosaria's burst just got eaten? Yeah. If you look carefully, my Rosaria just kicked her burst away off the map, so we basically lost our burst. Fortunately, with our Pyro characters and Layla, we were able to surpass our limits and defeat the Abyss Herald. Next, the Snake Worm Ding spawned, and we were able to make quick work of it. In Floor 11's final chamber, we had to defeat the Electro Flower, since it's stationary and doesn't move. Once we broke the core, we brought down the flower easily. On day 22, I went to farm for some more Dorito enemies, just so we can ascend the weapon again. I went with the Melt team again because I had a lot of fun with it, and seeing Layla's normal attack doing 5 digit damage was satisfying as well. So I definitely don't regret c 6 in my Bennett. I collected a bunch of prism drops and defeated most of the Doritos in the desert, so it was a pretty productive day. Even my Bennett is looking for more, but I got rid of all the Doritos in the desert. On day 23, I returned to the Spiral Abyss, but this time I'm challenging floor 12. There is less room for mistakes, so I brought my Melt team with me once again. The first chamber had a bunch of Whopper flowers, so we used Kazuha to swirl them together and finish them off with Xiangling and Tongyun. Next, a few Abyss Mages spawned, so we used our Kazuha to instantly break their shields. Finally, we fought some Eremites that we've been practicing against in the overworld, and did our usual rotations to deal big damage and clear the first chamber. The second chamber was the three Magu Kenki bosses. While I had my Layla's shield, we didn't have any healers, so we couldn't afford to take any damage. So hopefully our Layla's shield can be strong enough and withstand the Magu Kenki's attacks. After putting up the shield, I used Xiangling's burst to start melting the enemies, and did some nice damage with Chongyun's burst. My shield got destroyed, while my Layla's skill is still on cooldown, so I accidentally took some damage because of it. A little bit after, my Kazuha took some more damage, and I'm now down to red HP, but we had to risk it and I completed another rotation with him. We were able to defeat one of the Kenki, and now with two left and a little bit under 30 seconds, we could take our time and dodge out of attacks. With a very close fight, we were able to deal the finishing blow and get 3 stars for the second chamber, although I had to waste Tongyun's burst in order to do so. In the final chamber, there were 6 enemies split between 2 waves. We were able to quickly get them down to half HP, but they started to split up soon after. Luckily with some clutch bursts from both Kazuha and Tongyun again, we defeated the first 3 enemies. After that, 3 more Eremites spawned, and they were very separated. With less than 1 minute to go, we had to move fast. I used Kazuha to group 2 of them together, but the third was still very far away from us. With time quickly taking away, our hopes of getting 3 stars are slowly dwindling. 
Luckily, our Kazuo was able to group all of them together, and the enemies just stuck together for us to burst down. I know, I know. Kazuo carried, but without Leila's cryo application, Tong's burst, and Xiangling being Xiangling, we couldn't have cleared Abyss and gotten 9 stars out of every floor. With the Abyss out of the way, I started day 24 hunting for some consecrated beast enemies. The team I'm using is Razor, Nahida, Nilo, and finally Layla, which is a Shatter Hyper Bloom team suggested by Al Zora. I gave my Razor a free 4 star Claymore Meld Flower weapon from the Windbloom event, and leveled it up to 60 before I ran out of materials, which is why I'm now hunting for some consecrated beast enemies. I also gave my Razor a full Elemental Mastery set, so we could take advantage of both Hyper Bloom damage and also shattering the the frozen enemies, which skills from Elemental Mastery as well. I went to farm the beasts, and tried out this team, which is honestly one of the most fun team comps I ever tried. Nahida provides EM buffs plus Latendral reactions, Layla provides utility with her shield and cryo applications, Nilo freezes enemies, and Razor does big damage from a Hyper Bloom and shattering the frozen enemies. I farmed the Consecrated Beast for a little while, and got a good amount of drops from them. On day 25, I focused on leveling up my Razor to 89 and got a mailed flower to level 80 as well, and refine it to R5. I went to Sumeru to accept some bounties, and headed out to try my newly enhanced weapon. This team is very satisfying to play with, because we get a lot of different reactions between all of them, and more importantly, it's also very strong. We were able to deal around 46k per Hyper Bloom as well, but I might even be able to get up to 50k Hyper Blooms if I level up my weapon to 90. But if you guys thought Razor was a physical DPS, then think again, because I honestly feel like he's better as a Hyper Bloom DPS. So on day 26, I tried out another one of Arozora's team, the Freeze Animal team with Hazel being the main DPS. Instead of Faruzan, I used the Sucrose since I don't have her built yet. I found a Consecrated Beast in Inazuma, and basically just permafroze it and defeated it. This team was also pretty fun to use, and with mainly 4 stars, most of you can probably try it out for yourself as well. The next day, I tried out a Freeze team suggested by Anton, and I was able to defeat the enemies pretty quickly as well, and they stood no chance. But yeah, hopefully your arm is better now, and thanks again for the team suggestion. On day 28, I was able to play the Vibro Crystal event. We were also given trial characters so we could try a bunch of different teams that we couldn't do before, since I didn't have my Yunjin raised. I also tried out a Mel team with the Faruzan support, which is also a breath of fresh air. But yeah, thanks to Layla and some trial characters, we were able to complete this event easily. On day 29, I tried out my Layla in co-op, against a boss that really wants you to have a shield character in your team. My goal for fighting Azdaha is to try and keep everyone alive by the end of the fight. My shields were very durable, and even Azdaha was having trouble breaking them, so we were able to eventually defeat the boss. On the final day, I decided to take Razor's Shadow Bloom team to fight, ironically, the Wolf Weekly boss, and to just showcase the team I had the most fun with throughout the entirety of the month. Now I can see why Layla is the character you guys voted for. Between her overall kit with a very strong shield and her nice application that could fit into both a freeze and a melt team, I had a lot of fun playing her. Although as a sword character, unless you have either the key of the Kai Nisset or the Primordial J Cutter, you probably can't get her HP as high as I did. And since the majority of her skills scales with HP, it's pretty important to have one of those weapons. With her now having a banner since her introduction in 2.2, she's also pretty rare, unless you got really lucky in a standard banner. Just in case you guys don't know, I'm also celebrating one year of my Discord server as well. And there will be a limited rule for you to claim starting from today. So if you haven't joined my Discord server yet, Make sure to click the link down in the description or the pinned comments. Once again, thanks to everyone that suggested a team comp for this video, and also you for watching the video. And if you enjoyed the video and want to suggest who I should main next, make sure to leave them down in the comments below. And consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. And we'll meet again in the next one.